You're listening to The Wise Women Podcast, episode 17. I'm your host, Alicia Wilfert, founder of Yoke and Abundance, a creative leadership coaching business. This podcast is designed to inspire by introducing you to creative women living abundantly. I hope you'll savor Christina's words of wisdom as much as I have. There are just a few spots left for the upcoming mini retreat, Choosing Joy with me. We all know you cannot pour from an empty cup and this half day retreat is designed to help you refill. Imagine a day with seated yoga, meditation, time for reflection, journaling, art journaling, a healthy lunch, a like-minded community, and of course, you'll get my signature, can't be missed, goodie bag. This is a way for you to pause and take time for self-care. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is health care, work care, and community care. Refill and flourish in this mini retreat, Choosing Joy, with me on December 8th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Space is limited. It will sell out. And we're getting there. So head over and reserve your seat today at yokeandabundance.com forward slash retreats forward slash. Now, on to today's guest, Christina Cromwell. Christina Cromwell is one of the co-owners of Pure Bar Greensboro. Christina is one of the most driven and positive people I know. She is young and just talking to her, you get the feeling that like her, you too can do anything you put your mind to. Christina is driven, focused, and goal-oriented, and those qualities have really led to her success as a young entrepreneur. I hope you'll love this interview as much as I did, but first, a word from our sponsor. This week's sponsor is Triad Local First, a nonprofit membership organization based in Greensboro, North Carolina with members throughout the Triad. Triad Local First members include independent, locally owned retail shops, real estate agents, insurance brokers, marketing and advertising firms, accountants, dentists, restaurants, farmers, breweries, and more. TFL's mission is a commitment to building a strong local economy and a vibrant, unique community. The Buy Local season begins November 15th with holiday strolls happening November 17th and 24th and December 1st and 8th. For more information on how to support local independent businesses this holiday season and throughout the year, visit www.triadlocalfirst.com forward slash buy dash local dash season. Christina Cromwell, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. Can you tell us your age? Do you mind sharing? I am 26. Excellent. Soon to be 27, which is a little fearful. But When's your birthday? August. Mm-hmm. August. So yeah. what sign are you? I'm a Virgo. A Virgo. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What's yeah. I don't know a lot about Virgos. What's characteristic of I Virgo? really don't know. I am not that into it. Like, I mean, I'll read it, right, right. it in a magazine. Like, oh yeah, I'll totally read that. But I have no idea what being a Virgo really means. <laughs> <laughs> I know what my sign is. Yeah. And I know the signs of like good peop- matches. Yeah. Am yeah, I yeah. a good friend match? No. I think so. Okay. I think so. <laughs> um, so, Christina, can you tell us a little bit about your background? So, I am one of the owners of Pure Bar. Um, we have two locations here in Greensboro, and I started it with my best friend when we were in college. Uh, we were college roommates and seniors trying to figure out what was next in life. And I was a pure bar teacher in Chapel Hill, and I had made G come to so many classes with me. I was like, come on, you're coming to work out with me. And soon she fell in love. And we opened our first studio here in Greensboro because she's from here. Um, And ever since then, that's just been what I've been doing. It'll be five years in August, which is crazy. Um, I was 21 when we opened, and a week later, I turned 22, and it was awesome. It's just been whirlwind and fun. That's a really incredible story to me. I mean, I opened um, the yoga studio that I owned mm-hmm. when I was when I turned 30, and it seemed so scary then. And I feel like I had a little bit of corporate knowledge under me 
doing that. And I remember you opening when your studio opened, not long after my studio opened. And I remember thinking, they are so cool and they are so ballsy. I think also we just, I mean, I haven't, we never were out in the corporate world. We weren't really scared of anything because we hadn't experienced anything. So I think it was a blessing in disguise that we were young and just ballsy and, you know, going for it no matter what. I yeah. mean, we didn't really think about being scared. We just kept going. You did it. Yeah. Sometimes that's the best, right? Yeah. If you don't have any preconceived notions of how you're supposed to feel or what it's supposed to be like, just going just after it. Just going after it was all we really did. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like an animal spirit card? I would love an animal spirit card. Excellent. And you've never had an animal spirit no. card, right? Okay. Well, I'm I've excited. said this on past episodes, but this is something um, all of my one-on-one -on -one clients, we always do. We start with what's one thing that's going well right now, and then we okay. go into an animal spirit card because I think it's a really interesting lens uh, to help where see where you are right now. Okay, if you could put your hands on the deck and take a couple big deep breaths. And when you're ready, you'll just cut the deck with your left hand. And then flip that one over. Ooh, you got the dolphin. Okay, so dolphins are creatures of the water, like lakes and streams and oceans. and Creatures of the water represent our emotional life, our feelings, our flow, our desires. And specifically, the dolphin um, in the water, one thing I want to say about the water is that it says when the water is crystal clear, we know it in our hearts. So that's like a water card in general. Okay. And then I'll read to you what it says about the dolphin. Okay, innately intelligent, healer, light, blessings. The gifts of the dolphin are beyond what our human minds can grasp. Dolphin personalities are often drawn to the healing arts as they are sensitive to the subtle and enjoy working on the level of spirit. It's easy for dolphin types to underestimate the impact they make in the world. These creatures play such an important role in the wheel of karma that coming in contact with a dolphin type will change the entire course of your day and thus your life. This card can also indicate a profound blessing is on the way. When in balance, active healer, strong spiritual practice. When out of balance, underestimates own power and to bring into balance like-minded spirits. That's awesome. How does that land for you? I feel like it lands pretty well. I, I don't know necessarily how spiritual I am, but I love that. I feel like... A lot of that is very true. I do underestimate myself a lot. Um, I like being around like-minded people when I need that, when I'm down. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I uplift others and make everybody's day better when they come into contact with me. I don't know if that's always the case, but hopefully. <laughs> you certainly do that for me. Oh, okay. And I know uh, getting to see on Instagram what you all did last night. Can you talk a little bit about what happened last night? Yes, definitely. So we did our pop-up pure bar class in LaBauer Park and we, it was our second one of this summer, but we did it last year. We started at LaBauer Park and we did it last year and it was such a success that we decided to do it again. And working with LaBauer Park was just awesome. They're really nice. It's easy. It's beautiful. And I don't know exactly how many people we had because I haven't finished putting everything in the system, but I would say probably over 200. Wow. Um, and just all in the field doing pure bar together, jamming out to music. Everyone was just happy and smiling and sweating, and it was just powerful. Yeah. I mean, just looking out into the crowd and seeing all that and just seeing how everybody was happy after. And even just when you look, when you were to look down the street and people were just coming with their yoga mats in hand. It was awesome. Walking up, yeah, getting yeah. excited mm -hmm. to hang out with their tribe mm -hmm. and do something really healthy and mm -hmm. powerful for themselves. Yeah, so it was awesome. Yeah, and you made all of that happen. You and G and the yes. Pure Bar Greensboro community made that all happen. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because somebody asked me, how many people do you think are going to be there? And I said, I have absolutely no idea. You know, 
I hope that we have hundreds, but there could be five people. You never know. Um, and last year and even this year, you just have to take a moment to pause and just say, wow, this is so awesome. You know, how all these people heard and were compelled enough to come and join us. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. So you are a pure bar teacher, a studio owner, and then I think you are a multi-passionate entrepreneur, as Marie Forleo says. So can you talk to us about some of the other things that you do as well? So I recently started a marketing company as well with my friend, and it's super simple grassroots. We just work with small businesses and do their social media. Um, as a business owner myself, I know how important social media is to your business, but you wear 12,000 hats as a business owner, so you don't necessarily have the time to dedicate to it, to make it great. And Camille and I have perfected the system for Pure Bar, and we might as well do that for other small businesses. And we're cheap, we're effective, simple, and we just take something off of business owners' plates. And we have a few clients now who love it and say it's made such a difference, so we love to hear that, but we're always looking to grow. Um, and within Pure Bar, I kind of do a little bit of everything. I yeah. Mean, I could do whatever, I guess. <laughs> so how did you get the idea to juggle another thing? I was already doing it for Pure Bar, and then I started doing it for a friend's business on the side, and I said, well, why not just go for it, take another leap of faith, and we did it. I just come up with an idea, and I just go for it. I don't really try to think too much about it, otherwise you'll screw yourself over. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great. Because your hands are in so many pots, this will probably not be a very difficult question for you to answer, but I'm curious if there's a particular project right now that you're working on that you're really excited about. I don't know. That's really hard. Um, when I first answered these questions for the Wise Woman article, I said make a wish, I think, mm -hmm. and I'm still very excited for it. I recently got involved with the make a wish chapter here in Greensboro and was helping out with the event in May. And it actually ended up being the most successful event in like five years. Um, we raised over $300,000 and granted, I think, 26 wishes. Um, so it's kind of cool to break it down that way. And I'm very excited to still be working on that, but it's kind of on a pause right now and I'll hit it again next year. So I would say I'm most excited about the pop-ups right now. Yeah. You know, I'm fresh off of the one last night. The endorphins are high. Um, hopefully more and more people will just keep coming. Where did the idea for the pop-ups come from? Our friend who had done it at another studio and summer is always a little bit slower in Greensboro I mean so many people leave and for a fitness studio more people are doing things outside and We wanted to do something great for marketing That was also fun and had to do with the community and giving back to the community and so we landed on pop-ups and We had done a few in the past, but not as big scale um so when it ended up being that big scale, like 300 people, it was great. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's my focus this summer, just promoting that, hoping more and more people will keep hearing about it and come. It was funny because yesterday on Instagram, someone posted, it's Pure Bar pop-up season, which was funny to see, you know, reflected back on us. Like, I'm so happy that people kind of know that we do this in the summer. That's our thing. Um, so hopefully we can just keep doing it. Isn't it fun as a business owner when you do get something that you've got a lot of energy behind that you're excited about and you find out how excited other people are and you know they might even create like pure bar pop-up season. You might not have ever thought I never to would have use thought that. Yeah. <laughs> and and they they help drive it. And what's so beautiful I think about what you and G do is that you seem to latch on to the energy that your clients bring to the table. So it's not that it's this beautiful exchange of energy both ways that you can see in the studio where, you know, the instructors are giving, the people sitting at the front desk have all of this energy that they're giving, but those coming into the studio feel that energy and they try to give it back. 100%. I, 
I joke and I don't joke that Pure Bar is like Disneyland because you can't really be sad there. I mean, <laughs> you can. You can come in with shit you have to deal with and you might have had a horrible day or you might just want to cry because you're so frustrated. But you will smile whenever you walk in the doors. Yeah. You just can't help it yeah. because there's so much good energy. Yeah. I took your class yesterday morning and I felt like a hot mess. Like my body just was <laughs> not feeling it. and But I still had a great time. Yeah. It, it was just like, okay, you left with this energy that was pretty incredible. Yeah. And I mean, one example is one of our ladies who's near and dear to us, her son passed away. And... We were worried, you know, is she not going to come in for a few days? You know, she needs to deal with this. We want to be there for her. She came in every single day, and she said, this is what I need right now. I need to be here every day. And it just, it hits you. And, you know, if I'm just sitting behind the desk smiling at you and that makes your day better, that's what I'll do. If kicking your heels up higher makes you think, okay, I'm stronger, I'll do that too. Um, so that it was a good reminder you know sometimes people don't necessarily say oh you're doing a great job or I really need this Um, so when you get little tidbits from people it really hits them yeah and the power of community is so strong right I think that's something that very naively as a business owner I didn't understand from the get-go and certainly to the detriment of my business right Mm -hmm. was that something you understood from the beginning or was it something you've grown into? How have you built community? I think we have both. You know, we knew we wanted it to be a big community in the beginning, but we weren't thinking necessarily business-minded when we were doing that. We were just genuinely, we wanted a great community. We wanted to be friends with everyone and have everyone feel welcome coming in. And we didn't think this will affect our bottom line. Like, we need this to succeed. Um, It was just an effect from it. Um, I wish maybe I would have known that a little bit more, thought more about the business of it when we first started. Um, But it happened organically because we wanted it to happen. It didn't happen because we were worried about how much money we were going to make or how the business was going to do. Right. It's funny. I was taught when I did my yoga teacher training... um, just to keep a healthy distance from students from a, for a perspective of like the projection that happens with a yoga teacher and a yoga student to a yoga teacher and ethically speaking that was just a way that I held myself and it's not a really great way to run a business yes but you have to be careful you I do. mean yeah. it's a fine line right you just don't know I, when I moved to Greensboro, I did not have any friends. I knew G, her mom, and her dad. That was it. Um, And that's who I hung out with. And then I had to make friends, and I spent every waking moment at the studio. So some of my best friends are, by nature, pure bar And it has to be. That's what makes it it fun. Mm -hmm. And if it's not fun, it's probably not worth doing, right? Right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm curious... You don't strike me as someone that allows fear to creep in, but is there something that has taken a lot of courage to do recently? Like something that felt really scary, but you did it anyway, and you're glad you did? Probably opening the new garden studio, which, you know, is about a year out now. Um, Only, you know, nothing really scares me except for probably the fear of failure. Um, That's probably the biggest thing. I'll, I'll pretty much go, I'll do anything once, try something, um, but not succeeding or failing, it really scares me. So I think that was probably the biggest thing that has scared me recently because we're the first place to have two locations in Greensboro. and The first boutique right. fitness studio to have two locations. Right. And, you know, when you see like three or four people in a class, you understand it as a business yes. owner, the internal conversation that happens in your mind, you're freaking out on so many levels, oh, it'll be okay, no, we need this, blah, 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 um, whereas people don't get that, you know, unless you actually live it. Right. Um, and people are like, oh, no, it's fine, and I just 
yes, it's fine. But you don't really understand everything that goes into it. Right. Um, but we've come light years. I mean, obviously now it's a year later, um, but that definitely was scary at first. It's blooming and blossoming mm -hmm. and things are going really mm -hmm. well. It's crazy to see the growth. You know, I try to track the growth every single month and it's picking up every month. So that's really all we can ask for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're not currently a client of mine, but you and I have bonded quite a bit over goal setting. Mm -hmm. Can you tell folks what your process is on, because I know you have a weekly process of goal setting. Can you talk about that a little yes, bit? Yes, definitely. So it's not really personal goal setting, it's more business goal setting, yep. um, but I recently reached out to a friend and said, do you want to try and do this for our personal lives together? Oh. You know, maybe every week or every other week, we jump on the phone for a little bit and do this just for ourselves. So I'm in the process of setting that up, but basically, what I do every week with my business partner, G, we reflect on the past week and we say what our greatest achievement was, what our greatest challenge was. More often than not, it's rest. Yeah, um, I wanna start, I wanna pause there for a second and just say that it's so cool that you start with the greatest achievement. I mean, that's why when clients come and sit down with me, it it's one of the first thing I ask is what's going really well right now. So what does it do for you when you start with your greatest achievement for the week? It uplifts you. It makes you feel like you succeeded and you did something great in this past week. Even if horrible things happen, you have to just pick one thing that was great, that you did awesome because you're living life. You did something awesome in the past week, whether you think you did or not. Right. Um, and so you need to give yourself a little kudos for it. Yeah. So greatest achievement and then weakness from the week. And so for you, it's rest. Usually, yes. Just taking time to rest, um, which is double-edged sword because you need to be going and doing a million things, but you also need rest too. But I'm getting better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we do something we learned um, during the past week, whether it be reading, living life, talking to someone, I try to read every day and so usually I have a tidbit from one of the books I read or if I just learned something through living life um, sometimes like our staff or even the clients if they say something to me I'll put that in there as well um, and then we say what could you help me with um, for the next week or like I need help with something and we talk about that and then I would like to focus on blank in this discussion. So it's just a good balance of hitting a little bit of everything, right. you know, making sure you fill yourself up, giving kudos, acknowledging where you could have been better, something, some insight you gained, and then where you, how you can use all those things to grow into the next. Yeah, and then do you set goals for the coming week? Yes, so then we set goals for, we set four goals usually, and we have a pretty good system now. She takes certain things, I take certain things. And then we reflect on the goals from last week. So my goal last week was to market the pop-up. And yes or no, I gotta check it off. Check yes, because we were on the news, um, we had great coverage, we had a bunch of people talking about it, and then we did the pop-up. So got to check that one off. Um, and it varies, you know, sometimes if rest is a common theme, of my weak point, I'll put rest as one of my goals. And do you um, then put it on your calendar? Like I not necessarily on my calendar, but I know I have to check off yes or no at the end of the week. So I I've kind of perfected my downtime now. Um, Saturday at noon until Sunday night, um, I can fill my cup up then with whatever I need. That's great. Mm -hmm. I love that process. I think it's really important to have a goal process. I love it. I think I'm addicted to it. Yeah. Oh, I am too. Yeah. And I love checking off the boxes of the things that I've completed. But more than that, like the things that have to do with my dreams and desires, not just things to check off to check off, which is what you're doing too. I mean, everything relates directly to a dream or desire. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the work that you're doing right now the work that you want to be doing? I really don't know. Um, I don't know what I want to be doing. And that scares me. So maybe mm. 
whatever question was about what scared you the most, also the unknown scares me. And I know I'm beyond happy right now and if I could change my life, I, don't, I really don't know what I would change because I love what I'm doing. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to love doing this forever. And that scares me. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure that out, but also be at peace with trying to figure it out. I really appreciate you sharing that. And I think it's important because I think a lot of people that are listening to this want to be entrepreneurs and they think that that's the goal like you get there and then that's the thing that you do and you're happy but sometimes even if that's the thing that you're doing it doesn't mean it's the thing you want to be doing forever and that's okay right right and I mean it shouldn't you shouldn't just get to where you want to be doing that forever there's granted I know not everyone thinks like me but I always am thinking of how to improve how to make this better how to make your life better um just because you get to where you want to be doesn't mean you can't do something else. Right. Like we had one studio, we were booming, busting at the seams, and I was happy, but come on, there could be something else. Let's open another. <laughs> Let's try a new thing. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love that sense of chutzvah and adventure. Right. It's and the word I can't it. find, I told you about. Yes. Can you tell our audience a little bit about yes. that? So what are you looking for? So I am trying to find a word, and I, I will take all the help I can find. Um, a word to describe my core values. And one of my core values is this unknown word, and it has to do with growth, passion, like having a little oomph in life, and some energy, all of those things in one. And I can't pinpoint it. Your joie de vie. What does right. that mean? Like your essence of life. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know what the word is. It's just. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that you're working on your core values. I was freaking out because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to come back to my goals and core values. And now I can't define my core values because I'm missing a word. So that's bothering me. Um, but we'll get there. <laughs> you will. And go easy on yourself because right. it will come when it's supposed to come. And maybe our listeners can share yes. what they think that, would that be, word is. That would be great. <laughs> we can take uh, comments in, in the comment section. Share the word. Share right? the word that you think would help me out. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there a piece of advice or motto that you use in your daily life? You can do anything. And I had, you can do anything you set your mind to attached to that, but then I removed it because I think I just like, you can do anything better. Um, because you can do anything. Uh, yes, you need to set your mind to it, but just if you have an idea, you can do it. It might not happen immediately. You might need some resources, some research, but you can do anything. I just firmly believe that. And. It's funny because I have two younger sisters and I know I'm pretty mentally strong and I think I get that from my mother. And my middle sister, which I don't know if you've met her yet, mm -mm. but she just started working in the studio. She's living with me now. Um, she has told me so many times, not everyone is me as mentally strong as you. You don't get it. And I'm like, I know, well, yeah, but you can be, like I promise. And she would get so annoyed with me. And she started doing pure bar when she was in grad school and completely unprompted. I didn't say anything. She said, you're right. You are stronger than you think. Like you, you can be stronger if you set your mind to it. And I was like, thank you. Yeah. I've been preaching at this to you for years. Um, but I think being uncomfortable, holding an uncomfortable, knowing like, and then proving to yourself you can get through it shows that you can do anything. Yeah. I do think forms of exercise, I think that is the link yes. that teaches you that you can. Yeah, I think there's a, a correlation there. 100%. I mean, whether it be you go for a run and you're like, oh my God, I can't get up that hill. You can. And you get up there and you're like, oh my gosh, like I did it. I can do this. Whether you are in pure bar class, I cannot do that thigh. 
then you do it. You feel great. In yoga, you can't do another chaturanga. Your, your arms are going to fall off. And right. then you do it. I mean, you feel great. And I just, everyone needs to fill their cup up in whatever way so that they have the feeling every day of that they can do everything. Absolutely. And I think with exercise, I want to come back to this for a second. I mean, even if it's something as small as today I got out of bed in time to go to class before work. Today I got up in time to go run. Even if that run is not the fastest run you've oh, ever yeah. done, or even if it's, you know, a mile or two miles, it doesn't matter that that builds the confidence to believe that you can. 100%. And it's just a little self-care for you. Absolutely. I mean, even if you sit in your living room and do like some push-ups, it's just something for you that kind of just brings you to peace. Mm -hmm. I know not necessarily everyone finds it in exercise, but maybe if more people did, the world would be a happier place. Yeah, and exercise is really great for brain health. That's one of the things that we learned about in the positive psychology certification class that I took, is that there is so much research that backs up how really intense exercise is. And I know a lot of your audience might cringe to hear this, but more the empower classes, the things that get your heart rate going, really help get the the chemicals moving around in the brain right. in such a way that it helps um, brain health, especially also in preventing Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Did it say anything about the time or how often or it just kind of I guess depends there is some research around that and I don't know the specifics uh, but I could go back to my book yeah, and, yeah. and share that, with you cool later though. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you're a really creative person on a lot of levels so when you don't feel like it what keeps you creating um, being with my family definitely um, exercise even if I'm tired, I know that my body and my mind needs that to feel better, think clearer. Even if it's a walk or, you know, something little, I know that I need that to be creative. Um, and for friends, you know, just I really, my family's Italian, so I've always grown up with us entertaining at home. So having drinks or a dinner with friends and family is something that definitely fills me up. I don't need to go out to a super nice restaurant, but just gathering and being together with food and drinks and hanging out, that fills me up as well. Thanks for sharing that. I know your mom's a yogi. Mm -hmm. So did you grow up with yoga? So my mom used to do step way back in the day. She was like a step lady. We had steps in the house. You would always walk into the kitchen. Mom would be there doing some step aerobics. You never knew what you were going to get. Um, she started teaching in the 80s, I guess, anything. I mean, strength classes, step, cycle, or any sort of aerobics. And then as the fitness industry has changed and evolved, she has changed with it. And she landed into yoga being one of her things and what really spoke to her. I, I don't remember when she was trained. It was when we were little, probably in elementary or middle school. Um, but she's now like a master teacher trainer. She um, holds her own yoga teacher trainings and travels around the country. She does yoga retreats in Costa Rica and Italy, and it's crazy. <laughs> so did she incorporate yoga with you kids? Not necessarily yoga, but always being active. Always being active. Mm -hmm. So we were into sports, and um, she didn't really push anything, just moving, being active, and for the sole purpose of it helping your mind and happiness and also just being healthy. Yeah. So do you have a favorite yoga pose or a favorite yoga philosophy? I do have a favorite yoga pose. Um, and I think it ties into you can do anything and how we talked about how exercise helps carry you up those hills. Um, when I first started doing yoga with my mom, I, I mean, I could touch my toes. I played college soccer. I was a runner, not flexible at all. And I would go to yoga with my mom 
and I kind of hated her at the same time for making me go, but I, <laughs> I was like, okay, I should go. This will be good. And Birds of Paradise, um, she just popped into it. And I was like, oh, this is so not fair. My mom is always going to be better than me. And I was like, okay, I am going to do this. And eventually, like, it took me probably a few classes. And I mean, I went for a summer with her almost every day. And slowly but surely, I got it. And slowly but surely, my legs started going straighter, straighter, straighter. And I now I love that pose. When someone says, you option to go into Bird's Paradise, I go for it because right. I worked hard for it. I want to do it. And it makes me just feel the sense of, I made it up that hill or whatever. You, you know, you can do everything, anything. And it just reminds me of my mom too. You know, she would come over to me and, and help me. And she probably instilled the whole you can do anything in me. Mm -hmm. And it's just an example of that. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. In, in yoga, they so often talk about, you know, if someone says, oh, I can't do yoga, I'm not flexible. Well, the response is you do yoga to become flexible. What do you hear people say about pure bar? Like, oh, I can't do that because what's the thing? I can't do that. It's too hard. I can't do that. I don't have coordination. I can't do that. I've never danced. I've never danced either. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually my comeback. Um, because G and I are the studio owners and we've never danced. Right, okay. Right. You know, you tell me fourth position, I have no idea what's going on. Right. Um, when I started Pure Bar, I couldn't touch my toes. Um, I, so that's probably my other go-to line. I say, oh, don't worry. I don't know how to dance either. Oh, don't worry. When I started, I couldn't touch my toes. Um, oh, yeah, it's hard. I don't even remember my first class. So you have to acknowledge the doubt that they have mm -hmm. because that's real. Right. And, you know, you don't want to just discount it. You want to make them feel comfortable enough to be able to share that and know that other people are feeling the same way. And then I say, just try. You know, it's going to be hard, but there's modifications for everything. You know, I've done it with a boot. I've done it with one hand. We've had people in knee braces do it. You know, we've had um, a one arm lady do it. We've had lady with wrought iron in her back do it. You can do it. It might not look like the person next to you, but who cares? Right. As long as you're feeling something, then that's all that matters. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. I'm curious, this is, you know, my favorite question. Uh, how do you live a life of abundance? I live a life of abundance with, in my happy land. Um, my ener the energy around me every day is good. Mm -hmm. um, and I am 100% fully happy with it. You know, I said earlier, if I could change my life, I don't really know what I would change. And that is the genuine truth. I sometimes, yes, I'm tired and run down, but I live abundance with all of the people I come into contact with every day. You know, you coming in, like we smile at each other and we're like, oh, it's so great to see you. Like, it's gonna be great that you're in class. Just little things like that. You know, I get to have those touch points with so many people and, and that really fills me up. That's how I live abundantly right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in today and yeah. sharing your wise words of wisdom with everyone. I, um, I'm honored, really. I don't know necessarily how wise I am, but... Well, you are wise. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so grateful to be part of this and, and look forward to the next Wise Women event and next podcast, all of it. I read every single article on Wednesday mornings. Um, that's like one of my Wednesday morning rituals. I go from one studio to the next, grab my coffee, and read it. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being here. I hope you were inspired by Christina's words of wisdom. If you've enjoyed this podcast, head over to iTunes, give us a review, and then remember, sharing is caring. So please, share this podcast with a friend that could use a dose of inspiration and wisdom. When you share this podcast, it makes it possible for us to keep bringing wise words your way. Check out our website, yokeandabundance.com, for more words of wisdom, creativity tips, and information about my group and individual coaching programs. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our mailing list, and don't forget to register for the upcoming mini retreat, Choosing Joy, with me on December 8th. 
A huge thank you to our sponsor, Triad Local First, and my wonderful editor and producer, Ira Sterling at Julia Sound Recordings. Remember, every one of us has wisdom within. Keep sharing your words of wisdom because you never know who you'll inspire.